The year was 2018 and 19, and cannabis stocks were hot. Nothing gets your portfolio high like the marijuana stocks. Had to. The pot stocks are lit, and they're not showing any signs of cooling off. Well, Melissa, some traders have been cooking when it comes to cannabis these days, and over the course of the last month, the returns have been pretty astronomical. One of the market leaders, Canopy Growth, was trading at $50 per share, and another, Tilray, was priced at more than $140 per share. Fast forward to 2023, and cannabis stocks have lost almost all their value. Both those market leaders and stocks are now down 98% from their all-time highs of 2018 and 19. Cannabis stocks are either destined for bankruptcy and 100% value loss, or they are deeply discounted opportunities we should pay attention to now. Let's talk about that. founder and CEO of Stock Card, and on this channel, I share detailed fundamental analysis and interesting investment stories. The rise and fall of cannabis stocks is a classic story of investors running wild after the next big thing, pushing the prices to levels completely disconnected from the economic reality behind the companies and the stocks in that sector. Then suddenly and violently, everything comes down crashing. Almost all similar stock market stories start with a new shiny sector and end with investors losing almost all their capital. I own a few shares of Canopy Girls in my portfolio, shining red hot at the bottom of the biggest losers. I purchased those shares in 2018 with a few justifications. It was the leading company in the market, revenue was growing steadily, was a founder-led company at the time, it received a $6 billion investment from the alcoholic beverage company Constellation Brands to create and distribute a line of cannabis-infused drinks. Those were solid reasons to take the bet and buy 65 shares at $30 a piece. My investment almost doubled with the company hitting an all-time high of above $50 per share and then crashing down to $1 and a half per share on the day of recording this video. I didn't sell at the top, nor have I sold when I lost almost 94% of my investments. Losing the value of your investments if you don't need the cash isn't a good reason and justification to sell. Only panicked investors do things like that. As a fundamental long-term investor, I need to ask myself whether I see a reasonable path to recovery and whether I should buy even more shares. As Uncle Buffett puts it, if the price of hamburgers go down, you don't stop eating them. You may even eat more. By the way, talking about my personal portfolio, it's called Roll With Our CEO. This portfolio is our family's real money stock market investments, beating the S&P 500 going back to 2014, and it's available to our VIP users to see and follow. If you'd like to access it, go to stockcard.io, create an account for free, and then use promo code WELCOME all our case to receive 20% off of the VIP plan to see my entire portfolio. Of course, my portfolio is an investment advice, neither are any of hundreds of other real money or idea portfolios on our platform. Use them as a resource for new ideas or validate your own ideas while doing your own research. Now, how can Canopy Growth recover and grow and even thrive in the next 10 years. The overall cannabis market may grow rapidly, putting the wind behind this almost sinking ship. It can find a path to grow revenue. After all, we've seen non-alcoholic beverage brands such as Celsius setting record-breaking growth. Cannabis girls can and should be able to do similar things. Or the company can find 
a way to run its operations efficiently, turning into a cash generating and profitable stock. In the next few minutes, we'll go through these three options and discuss whether any of the three routes is possible for canopy growth. Let's start with the market. Despite everything happening with cannabis stocks, the global cannabis market is expected to grow by 24% between 2022 and 2026. The industry was hit by COVID-related restrictions, especially as farming and processing cannabis needs in-person human labor. But with the pandemic restrictions almost entirely eliminated, the industry is back on a growth track. It's quite apparent that legalizing medical and recreational cannabis use is also an important factor in driving growth. In the U.S. alone, 40 states and the District of Columbia have legalized medical use and 21 states allow recreational use. Even in a state like Texas, bills are advancing to legalize medical use. While federal level legalization is unlikely this year, President Biden has asked the Secretary of Health and the Attorney General to review cannabis's classification as a Schedule II drug, which is good progress towards ultimate legalization at federal level. It also opens the door for more pharmaceuticals to start researching cannabis as an ingredient, which can lead to a significant demand increase by pharmaceuticals down the road. So despite these stock price crashes, the cannabis industry is growing steadily. What about the company's financial strength? If Canopy Growth can grow its revenue by at least 50% of the overall market rate, the stock will have major growth potential, especially if you compare that with its 2022 5% revenue drop. The question is whether Canopy Growth and its management believe that they can achieve such growth. Let's see what they had to say in their latest investor presentation. The company aspires to generate 50% of its revenue from the U.S. market instead of its current concentration in Canada. It's been investing in a portfolio of consumer-facing brands such as Acreage, Wada, Jetty, and Terrasand, and plans to grow its own brands in the U.S. too. As a matter of fact, the company calls the U.S. legalization a once-in-a-generation opportunity. That is a good strategy. However, the company outlined several restructuring requirements to simplify its organization, especially related to Constellation Brands investment in the company and all the acquisition-related restructuring required for acquisition of Acre, Jetty, and Wana. It's also moving away from its retail operations by divesting from its Canadian retail business to cut costs and improve margins in the long run. The restructurings are naturally dependent on shareholders' votes and regulatory approvals and are expected to continue until the end of 2024, more than a year and a half from now. So it doesn't appear that the company is in a revenue growth mode and it is still figuring out its ownership structure for now. That's a short to midterm risk. Aside from restructuring risk, there are some good news and progress towards improving the company's financial strength. The first positive sign comes from non-cannabis related product lines. Remember, we talked about the gross potential in the non-alcoholic and ready-to-drink beverages market with the example of Celsius. Interestingly, Canopy Gross's BioSteel hydration drink is one of its fastest growing product line with $27 million in revenue in the last quarter, up 299% compared to a year ago. 
Compare that with Celsius at $653 million in annual revenue, and CGC may have growth opportunity beyond cannabis, but it is a step away from its core cannabis operations. The second positive sign comes from a modest top-line revenue growth. Although last quarter's revenue was down, the drop is mostly due to its divestiture from the Canadian retail business. Without its impact, the company's revenue actually grew by 2%. Besides that, Canopy Girls is still in a lot of financial trouble, including negative free cash flow, and it may still need to raise more capital or borrow to keep building the business. The bottom line is that this company has growth potential and the right strategy, but is struggling with many financial troubles. Things are moving in the right direction, but full recovery takes time and capital. If I park aside the fact that I bet on it back in 2018, I won't invest in CGC at this point. I wouldn't also add to my holdings, even though we can now invest at 0.7 times book value and two times sales. The price to book value lower than one reflects all the restructuring to convert notes and debt holders to common shareholders. That's not good for current shareholders. And the one dollar and half per share price tag means that investors are already baking twice the revenue growth in the price. I don't believe CGC is an undervalued stocks, even at the current levels. Does this mean that CGC would die and go away? That's unlikely. It still holds more than $500 million in cash, and any legalization news in the U.S. will bring momentum to the stock. So what should I do with my 65 shares if I don't believe it's an investable stock now? I can use it for tax loss harvesting and save on paying capital gain taxes on other better performing investments. By the way, I have an entire video talking about tax strategies for investors that I highly recommend you should check it out. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. But back to CGC shares, there is another alternative. The industry is growing at a rapid pace, as we discussed before. CGC is grappling with the financial restructuring, and most other individual companies in this space also have had similar convertible note financing and maybe struggling with similar restructuring challenges. So no individual company is a safe bet now. But an overall cannabis market ETF can be a better place to invest in the market's recovery. For example, an ETF focusing on the cannabis industry with low or reasonable management fee and large enough asset under management can be a good choice. Most investors are familiar with Alternative Harvest ETF, ticker MJ. It's not a bad choice with $230 million in asset management, uh, 37 holdings, and more than seven years of operations history. But with a 0.75% management fee, it's an expensive ETF. Alternatively, Global X Cannabis ETF, ticker POTX, or Cambria Cannabis ETF, ticker T-O-K-E, can be good choices too. I prefer Cambria Cannabis ETF because of its low 0.45% management fee and exposure to pharmaceutical companies active in the cannabis research space among its top 25 holdings. It's also run by Cambria ETF Trust, a company by Meb Faber, a very logical, a steady, and value-driven investor. I trust his judgment. The risk with Cambria Cannabis ETF is that it has a very low asset under management, around $11 million, which adds the risk of running out of money and liquidation if the prices do not recover soon. Ultimately, I choose to sell my CGC shares, use the loss for tax loss harvesting, and then buy a few shares of Cambria Cannabis ETF to bet on the cannabis market's growth rate in the coming years. 
reminding you that this isn't investment advice. Now it is your turn to do your research. I leave a link to MJ's and Cambria's cannabis ETF cards and CGC's stock cards on our platform so you can research them too. Also, don't forget that you can get a full list of all the stocks in the cannabis industry by typing cannabis in the search bar on stockcard.io. I'll leave a link to that list in the show notes too. If you have a better strategy to bet on the cannabis industry, share it in the comments so we can all learn from each other. I'll see you next time.